Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle, where professionals in the field inform, educate and inspire the community to be healthier, more balanced and live the lifestyle they love. Today's guest is Heather Bell Murphy, a health, life and love coach. And our topic is what I learned from love. Welcome to the show, Heather. And tell me, what did you learn from love? Lots of great stuff, Kirsty. I've been, I've been in loving relationships for a long time now, including some pretty significant ones. My biggest skill that I've learned, that I think I can say that I've learned, you know, over my past sort of, sort of 35 years of, you know, of actual adulthood, is emotional balance. What I see with clients, and, I, and I've actually come from an experience of being somebody who was highly oversensitive at one stage, suffered with you know, anxiety, depression, those sorts of things. And um, being emotionally balanced no longer means that I'm on that seesaw emotional roller coaster of being, when I'm up, I'm up, and everything's great. When I'm down, I'm down. And when I'm down, I would need to do something to get up, to escape that uncomfortable, bumpy feeling. So, you know, for women, that commonly looks like doing things like eating, eating the wrong things, overconsumption of food, having unhealthy relationships with things like TV or alcohol, or even, even just developing unhealthy relationships with things like, with, with, with well, I shouldn't say things, but you know, we'd say their children, for example, you know, where they're just overly living out a life through someone else. So that sense of being in our beingness and being in balance is a really important thing. The other really important thing is whether we're in a relationship intimate other, you know, with the, with, with the person of the opposite sex or even an intimate relationship with same sex. And even if that is with a sister or another relative, say, for example, someone is most likely to carry the masculine energy in the relationship and someone is most likely to carry the feminine energy in the relationship. Now, the issue with that is that especially if it comes to being in a relationship with, with your significant other, men are going to feel much more comfortable expressing their feelings, or as I, another great expression for it is crashing the boat of their heart on, on your island and wanting to stay with you if you're really emotionally comfortable. Particularly if you're emotionally comfortable, you know, at bump, during bumpy, you know, potentially volatile times. So that's a really important thing. Could you please explain a little more about masculine and feminine energy for us? I'd love to, especially as we know that there's a lot of gender and role confusion going on in society at the moment. So clients commonly come to me. And there can be a confusion in their relationship, especially where some girls now may be in a situation where they're, or some women may be in a situation where they're earning more than their partner. You know, or you might have a, a, a same-sex couple where one person is, you know, significantly, obviously, the, um, significantly the, the breadwinner in the household. What I often find, what I'm finding in relationships now sometimes in same-sex couples, generally in, with, with, with women, or in, couple, in heterosexual couples. Um, it's like two people are both trying to wear the pants in the one household, and that doesn't work. So being the masculine, some of, some, some, sometimes people mistake carrying the masculine energy in the relationship as being controlling or dominating, and that's not actually where it's at. It's actually more of a protective role. You'll, you'll often get one person is more of the protector. Now, in my relationship, it is definitely my partner. He fits that male protector, breadwinner figure particularly well. And I'm definitely much more the nurturer. He's nurturing as well, but of course, it's part of that dance that we do. 
he nurtures me in other ways, but I tend to definitely be the feminine energy, the, the nurturing, the receiver. I'm definitely the feminine receptor in the relationship. And have you got any tips for our viewers? Absolutely. Emotional balance is essential. I call it emotional landscaping with clients and emotional processing. And you know, we're very, very lucky that as women, being in touch with lunar cycle, because we're 60% water, it's a great time to follow the phases of the moon, being in dark moon or being in full moon, when we know that it's time to, so cleaning the house, and cleaning out the shoe cupboard and being organized at that time, it's a great time to utilize that energy doing those kinds of things. And then being in full moon, that's, a more, of a, that's more of a doing time. So that's, that's the time when you can, um, you know, a great time to, to, to be more into exercising or to be into making changes and fulfilling change, whether that is changing your direction in your career and having a plan around that or changing, you know, your eating regimen, for example, upscaling it or whatever, you know, or, um, you know, you might change your physical regimen. How am I going to exercise? How is that going to change? So full moon is a great time, more of a doing energy compared to dark moon is much more of a time for planning, cleansing. Well, oh, thank you so much, Heather. That was wonderful. If anyone wants any more information on Heather Bell Murphy or on what she learnt from love, please look up her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with another fantastic guest and a very interesting story. Stay tuned. After the break, psychic medium and author Anthony Kilner will be talking about what do people mean when they say astral. Welcome back. Our next guest, Anthony Kilner, is a psychic medium and author and the topic we'll be discussing is when people talk about the astral, what do they mean? Welcome, Anthony. Thanks, Megan. What is the astral and what does astral travel mean? The astral is a really interesting space. In general terms, and not making it too complicated, me personally, I see the astral as the a realm that surrounds the earth. And within the realms of the astral, there are 10 by 10 by 10 by 10, and it's basically levels that you go up. Now, the thing about that is everyone will have a, a slightly different interpretation on it. However, our spirit body, goes out into the astral and is experiencing all sorts of different bits and pieces. I'll get to that in a sec. The main thing is understanding that unlike dreams, which are a soul message that require interpretation, they're muted in colour, the astral is vibrant. It's vibrant in its colour. What you do, what your spirit body does out in the astral really impacts what you feel on your physical body. And that's really interesting. So you go into the astral to meet your loved ones. You go into the astral to meet uh, and have experiences with teachers, learning, that sort of thing. You can go into the astral realm if you're uh, in one way uh, to s remote view into the future. So if you're looking for, to get a job, you might put yourself out there and experience that in sort of between the astral realm and your physical realm. So it's really quite an interesting topic in general. More specifically, our spirit body is going out there to experience everything that is in the astral realm. We meet our loved ones, and so any of our departed relatives, we can meet our friends, so we can all go to an astral point together. Now, how many times have you talked to people and they said, they get up in the morning, they just think, oh, I feel like I've just run a marathon, I can't get my body right. And you talk to them and they've been out partying in the astral because that's the big party place, that very first layer of the astral. Closest to the earth as it moves around, sort of semi-elliptically, uh, 
around sort of one till sort of three, four in the morning. And that's when most people, they'll, they'll have an experience, they'll wake up and they'll wake up and it might be one eleven or 3.33 or something like that, or 2.22. It seems to be a lot of universal timing in how all that works. And once your body's out there, uh, like I said, we can interact with people. We learn from the astral realms as well. So there are actually people, spirit people that live there that don't just visit and we learn from them. So there's a whole lot of stuff that happens in that space people going into the astral and, and helping and doing what they need to do and they quite often they go there and they help people as a spirit being. So if, if somebody has passed away and they need help to move into that realm properly, we quite often will go there in our sleep not even knowing what we're doing and we might be a police officer, a nurse, a doctor or something like that that then helps guide them to where they need to be and gives them that opportunity. So the, the astral realm has got so many possibilities, such a huge topic, and yet we do it subconsciously in our sleep. We, you know, we don't even think about it half the time, and that's the beauty of it. So when we are growing up from young children and our energy is developing and our spirit body is developing, it goes off and it experiences all facets of life, from intimate relations right through to having fun and learning about things, and it impacts us on a physical level. So all that is really amazing that our spirit body can do that all in the astral. What sort of training is involved to experience astral travel? Okay, so there's a lot that can be done. We do it subconsciously, like I've mentioned, automatically from when we're a child right through to when we're an adult. And the, the training that can be done is learn to meditate. The deeper you meditate, the more chance you've got of your spirit body coming out of your body and going off on, on that journey. So a good teacher, a, a good practitioner. There are, are lots of different things you can do to learn how to enjoy an astral experience. And mostly though, to really get a hang of it, you would join a, a meditation group or a spiritual group and they would do that as part of what they do. And then you can do things like go on group astrals where you will actually meet the other members of a group and you will go somewhere specifically Generally, it's to do healing work on the planet or to help in, in situations that have are cropped up from war or natural disasters, that sort of thing. So lots you can do in that space. They're the main things. Find somebody that knows what they're doing with it and then learn from them. You know, we, we talk about the ascended masters, people like Sai Baba and Jesus and all these other people, and they could actually leave their body in one space, their physical body as we would know it, and appear halfway around the world and look just as physical and real. And Sai Baba did this quite a few years back where he appeared on like three or four different continents all at the same time and people were ringing up to talk to other people to say, oh no, Sai is here with me and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, many cultures, especially many indigenous cultures, uh, do medicine journeys, that sort of thing where it helps to release the spirit body out of the physical body to go on a journey to understand themselves. And that's quite technical and, and again, it comes from a deep cultural belief uh, of what they're doing. So they know what they're doing, they do it safely. And guided meditations, having the right teacher, having, you know, to get them to go out to do that is really important in that space. What suggestions do you have for our viewers in terms of their own astral travel? Right, so good suggestions would be there are lots of great books out there on, on astral travel and how to do it. If you don't get the right information out of the book, then going to a good practitioner, somebody that knows what they're doing, someone that knows how to guide you there and bring you back safely. A good meditation teacher will be able to do it, a good spiritual teacher will be able to do it. And then, you know, there are the other ways, like I mentioned before, of doing it. However, I believe that we can learn this just through practice. And the other really important suggestion is if you're doing this at home and you're by yourself, don't have the pets in the room. Because if your spirit body's flying off somewhere and your physical body's here, right? if a dog or a cat or something jumps on you, it scares you and you jump back into your body really quickly. And 
you know, you'll know, and most, most of the viewers will probably pick up on this, at one point, you know, you would have been travelling in the car, head on the side, a little bit of dribble coming out, and you jump back into your body like that. That's your spirit body, has been out doing something because you're so bored with what's happening. It's off doing what it wants to do, and it comes back in in a hurry, and so that's what happens. And most people will wake up in the morning, they wake up with a jolt, and that's because their spirit body's come back into their physical body, and where most people say, I feel like I got out of bed on the wrong side, that's because they're not lying back up. So probably the suggestion is go back to bed or lie down, visualize your spirit body and your physical body coming into perfect alignment, and then getting up again and moving forward for the rest of the day. So that would be my, my top suggestions. Thanks, Anthony. That's such good information to consider. If you'd like to know more about Anthony Kilner and what people are talking about when they mention the astral, please go to his webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And after the break, we have another interesting guest with another interesting topic. Stay tuned. After the break, barbecue cook and healthy food advocate, Sarah Kirishan will be talking about healthy food for today's busy people. Welcome back to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle. We are here again with Sarah Kirishan, barbecue cook and healthy food advocate, continuing our discussion about healthy food for today's busy people. And Sarah, this looks like you've brought a party into the studio and I can't <laughs> wait to hear more about it. It looks so delicious. Amazing. Well, this is my favorite favorite, my go-to, my crowd pleaser. When I am doing a barbecue, this is what I get out every single time. It is, I know I go on a lot about making sure that barbecue is always easy, but in this case, it is so quick and so easy, and I've never met someone that doesn't enjoy it. It is just delicious. Uh, please explain what we have here. <laughs> okay, so what we have is, uh, I'll talk about these amazing little triangles here. So we've got lamb mince in pita bread in its simplest form. However, me being me, I always like to bam up my meals a little bit. So with the lamb mince, what I do is I pop in some tomatoes, some onion, some Mediterranean uh, and Middle Eastern spices, such as sumac, Aleppo peppers, they can be a little hard to get hold of, but we can pop in a few other uh, inspired herbs and spices. So a bit of paprika is amazing in there, some parsley, some garlic, mince it up, smear it in a pita bread and pop it on the barbecue. It is sublime every single time. Do you cook the mince before you put it in the pita bread? No. So you'd be surprised. It can be a little bit surprising when you do cook it because it cooks so easily. You just kind of get one large pita bread, smear half of it with the lamb, the raw lamb mince mixture, fold the pita bread over, straight on a barbecue with a bit of oil. Yum. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Next to the lamb pitters, we have smashed potatoes. These are, again, a crowd pleaser. They're delicious. And I am a little bit sneaky with this dish. You can exclude it, but I like to baste mine in some butter. And I put a bit of paprika in the butter as well. So it infuses through the potatoes as they're cooking. Just continue to gently baste them with a little bit of that butter. Uh, if you want to get really fancy, you can get a few stalks of rosemary and use that to baste the potatoes and it adds even more flavour again. So the absolute best combination to have with this dish is my loaded yoghurt. Then I bam it up with some of my secret ingredients. So let me talk you through what we have. Now, lemon, very simple, very straightforward. The acidity helps cut through any fats or any, you know, umami flavors uh, for the barbecue and it complements everything perfectly. We'll pop that there. So my secret ingredient, people always ask me how I manage to get so much flavor into the food that I cook. Often I use preserved lemons. Ah. 
They're salty, they're super powerful in flavour and they just make every dish so much more delicious. So I pop in the preserved lemons. I've got some grated garlic here because hello, garlic makes everything taste better. Then what I have, this is a combination of three herbs. Use whatever's handy. This is mint, parsley and oregano. Dill works absolutely spectacularly in this dish as well. You know what? I love it being super herby, so I'm going to put all of those herbs in. And they will soften and they will infuse the flavour of the yoghurt as the day, days go by. So definitely one to keep in the fridge because it only gets better with time. And then two other ingredients. You can actually add quite a few ingredients to this yoghurt. This is kind of in its most simplest form. I'm also going to add in some sumac. So sumac is like a, a Middle Eastern berry. And so they dry it out and they grind it up. And I've also just got some salt in there because again, everything tastes a lot better when we add a bit of salt, doesn't it? And you pretty much add in a little bit of olive oil and mix it around. The longer you leave it, the better because the flavors will infuse even more. But I'm sure you are gonna try this and I'm sure you're gonna say it tastes amazing just the way it is, but obviously, as you leave it, it'll just keep getting better. So once, once you've made your yogurt, grab a pita bread, pop a bit of yogurt on there, straight down the hatch. It's amazing. <laughs> Would you be able to share with us your best entertaining Barbie tips? Okay, so there's so many ways that you can enjoy a barbecue even more when you are entertaining. So for example, with these pitas, you can even get people to make their own. If you want, say here, here's a pit of bread, pop a bit of mince on there, fold it over and chuck it on the barbie. Otherwise, because it's done so quickly, we've got our friends together, we've got food kind of going on and coming off the barbecue and it becomes quite a communal situation and people just, <laughs> trust me, whenever I do these pitters, people always keep kind of strategically coming back to check in if there's any more. But in terms of you cooking it on the barbecue, it's a social thing, it's an active thing. It gets you outside and as we know, cooking on the barbecue tastes better. So always make sure that you've got your barbie nice and hot when you're gonna put food on there. I always use charcoal. I prefer charcoal cooking. It, the flavor and the heat distribution is far better. And it, it seems daunting, but it really is not. It is a very straightforward process. It's almost as simple as lighting a gas barbecue. Honestly, you just put charcoal in a barbecue or a pit or whatever you can find that's safe. Um, you use fire lighters and put them in amongst the charcoal. I always use natural fire lighters when I am cooking with food uh, or using the fire for cooking with food because it doesn't taint the, the taste of the food either. So it's a much better option for you. And then once it's ignited, once those, the charcoal is white and glowing red, you know you're good to cook and you will infuse the most incredible flavors into your food every single time. <laughs> well, thank you so much again, Sarah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this myself. So I'm excited. My pleasure. If you'd like to learn more about Sarah Kirishin and healthy food for today's busy people, please visit her webpage on our website at healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And that's all for today and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to know more about our show, please like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel.